Good morning, folks. Welcome along to the vlog. So, just been into well, tool station. They're trying to sell me a trade account, a trade credit account, which I don't really need, but apparently there may be some discounts coming up in the future, so it'd pay to have one, even if I pay for everything I buy up front. So, that's something I'll consider. So, what I've been in for this morning is some jigsaw blades. So yesterday, I was toying with the idea of buying a scroll saw in order to do the detail work in the center of the lettering that I'm cutting out for the, for the new sign, if you will. And they're about 100 quid, thereabouts, and you don't actually, you can't buy the blades for a uh, scroll saw from tool station or screw fix, which is odd. So I thought, well, instead of, you know, spending that kind of dosh straight off the bat, I'll pick up some different types of jigsaw blades and I'll see if I can build a little jig to hold the jigsaw upside down and uh, with the right type of blade, maybe we'll be able to use that as a little scroll saw by popping a hole in the centre of the piece of work and then sitting it on top of one of these blades which will be mounted upside down the way and uh, I'm working it like that. There's only one way to find out though and that is by going to the unit and setting her up. Oh, I need to fix the boot as well. Every time I start the engine the boot opens because the button's broke. Right off we go. It's busy here this morning. One thought, would you? Mid lockdown and there are well, there were three people in Tool Station when I went in. They know me, you see. They know me by name, because I'm in there three times a week with the projects that we uh, put together. This is when the camera falls off. Hey! I've got you precariously balanced at the moment on the uh, dashboard. And I think it's going to fall off any second. We'll see. So yeah, usually, out of the two, screw fix and tool station, I uh, tend to go to tool station more often because their prices are better and actually you get a better customer service in tool station. I don't know whether it's the kind of people that they employ. I mean, the guys in screw fix are fine. They're just not as chatty. And I found that I've used two or three different uh, branches. We've got a few rounders. We've got the Retford branch, we've got the Harworth branch, and the Worksop branch, and they're all kind of within nine miles of each other. So generally, if one of those branches doesn't have something that I want, one of the others usually will, so I can collect straight away. Alternatively, I can get it delivered if I order over 50 quid's worth of stuff. But every time, whilst the staff in the tool station uh, Screwfix branches are nice and friendly. The ones in Tool Station, they tend to remember your name, uh, talk to you a little bit more. They're just a little bit more pally, do you know what I mean? So there's that part of the experience, which I think goes a long way in retail. And then of course, there is the competitiveness in the prices. So you can buy pretty much the same stuff from both places, but tool station always seem to be 10, 20, 30 pence cheaper on items, you know, that are around a pound to five pounds. Say you wanted a 15mm uh, compression elbow in brass, Screwfix might charge you 119 for them and tool station will charge you one pound nine. And it adds up when you're buying dozens of them a month, which sometimes I am. So yeah. <clears throat> My favourite is definitely Tool Station, so get a sponsor in Tool Station, come on, send me some freebies. Also what I've noticed recently is, uh, this is probably down to Brexit, there are very, very few large tools in either Tool Station or Screwfix. I was looking the other day at the plane thicknesses again, and that led me to have a look at like the shop vacs, and some of the other big workshop tools, that, like table saws and the like, all of them 
are sold out, you might get one or two available for delivery. So I think that is related to difficulty importing from China, ultimately. But uh, they're getting stuck at the border, aren't they? They may be coming through Europe or something like that, we don't know. But it's definitely having an effect, I've noticed it. And uh, where else did I go the other day? And I was, oh, I went into Wilco's. You know, Wilco's, the uh, high street hardware store that we have. I went in there for some um, plastic pots to make some painting when I did the doors the other day. They hardly had anything on the shelves. Now that has definitely got to be down to Brexit. Right. We're at the major roundabout in the centre of Redford now. I think we'll go through town this morning. And uh, going to work that way. We've got the big three-phase heater on because it's freaking chilly. And <laughs> excuse my outburst. Uh, this here is a router which fits into this rebate upside down of quass uh, in order for me to use the sort table as a router table as well. And by conveniently having this little slot in the top of the table means we have somewhere to mount said jigsaw. Now the jigsaw in question is probably older than my YouTube channel, in fact I know it is. It's a uh, Black & Pecker, let's have a look, KS531, 370 watts, made in England, made in England. So, it's very old indeed, but it's still kicking. So, we may as well use that, because it's the only one I've got. I was also tempted to buy one, but times are hard, folks. Get on that Patreon. Can't afford a new jigsaw. <laughs> right, so what I'm doing is squaring up this basil platen. And then we're going to go around the edge with a fine tipped sharpie and cut out our new base plate for the jigsaw. And we can do that on the bandsaw, which is conveniently located just to my right. So let's do that now. Well, maybe not. The throat's not deep enough, so I'll have to chop this in. End off on the chop saw first, which is conveniently located to my left. Can, uh, do the fine tuning on the band so there we go that looks good to me so we've got the uh, width right by the looks of it and we just need to take a little bit off the length so again if I just spin you around boys and girls you'll see that we've got a new addition to the workshop it is a sanding machine I need to hook it up though to the uh, dust extractor as you can see so let's just 
salt this out. That's a little bit off, that was quick, wasn't it? Test it for the width again. Yeah, that's lovely. So now all we need to do is just uh, put a round edge on the corners. Just like that. And this is all real time. This is all real time. So we're back. We're back over to the hole in the toybel. Let's get it in frame for you. And look at that. It's almost like it was made to fit. It's because it was. So what I'm going to do now is figure out where's the best position. Where we're not going to foul anything underneath. Where's the blade going to go? I think we're going to have to have it mounted this way so I can stand here and work on it. This way looks a little bit tight. Well, it will go, but I don't want the blade that far to the front of the uh, table. Excuse me. So I think there is where we're going to have to have it. It will probably go a little bit further back as well because we've got a touch of clearance not too much. So what I'm going to do is offer the blade up underneath like this. That's as good as it's going to get. So I think about there. So if I mark on the table itself, I don't want it to be too tight. It does actually have a dust extraction port on here as well, but I don't think it works much. So if we just come, just forward to touch from there, which is about there, and then the centre, so we can screw it on, about there, then we'll pop this back in, we'll go and grab a square from somewhere, there we go, I've got plenty of squares, So we're about uh, two inches and one eighth. That's that. And here we are. About there. Beautiful. So we're going to cut a little hole for the blade to poke through. About there. Pretty much a very small clearance hole and then we'll figure out a way of bolting the jigsaw to the bottom. So I've taken the base plate off the jigsaw and there were some conveniently sized M5 by 0.8 pitch holes in the front here and I just happened to have some bolts that fit some machine screws that fit in there so I'm just tapping another hole in the back so we've got three points of uh, fastening one of a better word and that should allow me to drill some holes in that piece of timber that we've just cut and bolt the base of the jigsaw onto there like that, do that way, from the other side. So if I need to fasten it, I just hold it up, pop three, three screws in, and uh, there we have it. I'm also considering cutting a slot in the centre here as well, because then I can access the other screws on the jigsaw down in the centre here to rotate the base plate, and then I can do 45, up to 45 degree angle cuts as well. So I'll just uh, I'll consider that. I think 
that looks pretty smart. So this in here is a little square bit I'm talking about cutting out. So yeah, let's have a go at that. I'm not sure that blade's in the right place either, but I'm sure it'll make its own path. Okay, so we have mounted the jigsaw under here, and I'm going to set the trigger to remain on, and we're going to take the jigsaw cable and we're going to plug it into the vac, and that means that when I turn the vac on, the jigsaw will turn on, and then I manage to screw in a little port on the back of the jigsaw, hopefully uh, utilising its dust extraction system. So I've tried it with putting a little bit of this sawdust down here when it was on and it sucked in. So maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. And here we have the letter D which I need to carve out internally. So let's give it a go. Well I've had to on reflection screw this board down because it vibrates like a, a fucker and uh, it was bouncing out effectively so I put four screws in the edge here and uh, that should be enough to hold it in position while we give it a dry run. Let's turn the vac on. Well, probably not as smooth as a scroll saw would give it, uh, you know, would do. But I think, as far as roughing it out goes, it's better than holding the jigsaw by hand, I'd imagine. Just need to hit in there with maybe a bit of sandpaper or just the back of a file. But I think once that's on a wall, you're not really going to notice that slight imperfection and it is slight. I might try it again but with a thicker blade because there seems to be a little bit of lateral movement on this one uh, so you can't put any side loads on the uh, on the blade otherwise it doesn't work. Hopefully the thicker blade will give it a little bit more rigidity in terms of uh, being able to keep the blade straight and vertical or perpendicular to the timber. But I think that will do. We've got a little bit of scorching on the inside here from trying to take that corner too sharply. And I was encouraged to do that because it's a thin blade. So I think if we had a thicker blade, then I'd be more inclined to kind of peck away at that radius rather than try and take it in one swoop. So uh, all, all round, all round, all round, you know. All round, I say that was a resounding success.